Today, we're going to take a look at three methods for creating cartoon outlines or ink lines. Let's go. In last week's video, I showed how to create this toon paint effect. If you haven't seen that video yet, be sure to go back and watch it. I do want to correct something from that video though. I said that the light vector uh, only worked in specific contexts. Uh, and so it wasn't possible to use a light vector in Unreal. So if I plug this light vector into my dot product node here, you can see that I get an error and it says the light vector can only be used in light function or deferred decal materials. Um, so uh, using the light vector node is off the table. And when I saw that error, I thought, well, I guess the light vector node uh, isn't available for use. But it turns out there is another node that does bring the light vector in and it's called atmosphere sunlight vector. Uh, so if I use this one, right now I'm just using this hard coded value of 0 0.7, 0 0.7, 0 0.7. And this is what I did last week. And you can see that if you look at my shadow, um, the light is actually coming from the upper left here. Um, but this hard coded light vector that I've created is not coming from that same direction and so they don't match. But if I take this atmosphere sunlight vector node and plug it in, that gives me the actual direction of the sunlight from my scene. And so now the lighting on my tune shader matches the lighting from my scene. And I wanna give a shout out to Colton Sheldon who let me know about this in the comments. So really appreciate your help with that, Colton. All right, well, let's get started with our tune outlines. Uh, we wanna learn how to create the dark outlines uh, around, our, around our tune shaders. And we're gonna look at three different methods for doing that. The first we do directly in the shader itself. It's the easiest and cheapest method but as I'll show you in a minute, uh, there are some issues with it. So what I'm gonna do is uh, scroll down here and I've built uh, a little bit of a shader network here that will do uh, what I'm looking for. So these nodes are creating my dark outline. The first thing that I do is I take my pixel normal and my camera vector and I do a dot product between those two. So let's take a look at the results I get from just the dot product of the pixel normal and the camera vector. You can see that uh, this gives me kind of like a Fresnel fall off. So my model is dark on the edges and it's bright in the center. And if I wanna see uh, a little bit more of what that's doing, I can use a one minus node here to see the opposite of that. And you can see that I get, I get uh, dark in the middle and light on the edges. It is possible, instead of using the pixel normal here, to use uh, the vertex normal. But if I substitute in the vertex normal, what you're going to see is that uh, my results are a little bit chunkier. I don't know if you can see that, but it's not like a perfect sphere here. Um, and that's because the vertex normal is doing interpolation. And if I don't have a highly tessellated model, if I don't have a whole lot of triangles, I'm gonna get some artifacts here. So I believe that you can get higher quality using the pixel normal in world space instead of using the vertex normal. I believe that vertex normal would be cheaper, but pixel normal gives you higher quality. You can see when I'm using the pixel normal uh, I get smoother results when I'm using the vertex normal. They're just a little bit chunky. Okay, so this is the foundation for the outlines that I'm getting. And what I want to do is be able to detect if my value that I've calculated here with my dot product is below a specific threshold. So I'm using an if node. And here I'm saying if this value that I'm passing in from my dot product is greater than this threshold value, uh, then we're gonna return a value of one. But if it's less, we're gonna return a value of zero. 
So I've set my threshold value at 0.15. So what, I, what I'm doing is if this mask that I'm creating here is darker than 0.15, then we're going to return a value of 0. Otherwise, we're going to return a value of 1. So let's take a look at the result of our if statement and see what we get. All right, so you can see that we've now got a nice dark outline around our sphere. So every pixel in the mask that I've created with my dot product that's uh, less than 0.15 is going to be black and everything else is going to be white. And that gives me a pretty decent outline. So now I can take the results of this outline and multiply it by the paint effect that I created in, from last week's video. So we just move our nodes over a little bit and take the results of our outline here and multiply it by our paint. Now we get a nice, fairly complete looking tune shader. You can see that I have my paint shades here and I have my nice dark outline. Here's how you do the same thing in Unity. So I have my normal vector and it's in world space. And I also have my camera direction. So this is the camera node. And one of the inputs from the camera that I can grab is the direction. So I'm taking the camera direction and negating it. And then I'm doing the dot product between my world space uh, normal vector and my negated camera direction. And this will give me that nice gradient from black to white, depending on uh, how much the surface is facing the camera. Then I'm gonna use a comparison node so that I'm gonna ask the question, is the result of my dot product less than 0.25? Uh, and I can put whatever value in here. The larger the value this is, the thicker my outline is gonna be. So a value of 0.5 is gonna give me a really thick outline, and a value of one is gonna give me a really thin outline, probably barely even visible. Uh, so I want a value of like somewhere between um, 0.15 and 0.25 probably. I'm just going to use 0.25 so that it's a little bit more obvious here. Um, so I do a comparison and this is going to be true if the result of my dot product is less than 0.25. So if it's true, it's going to be on the edge and if it's false, it's going to be somewhere in the middle. So then I use a branch node and I say if it's true, then shade that edge zero Otherwise, uh, give me a one because we're in the middle. Okay, and then I take the result of that and multiply it by my paint and pass it into my master stack. So you can see I've got the same results here in Unity um, by doing pretty much the exact same math that I was doing in Unreal. Okay, so we could call this done, uh, but there are a couple of problems and I wanna show you what those are. This dark outline method works really well if you have nice rounded objects like this sphere here. But if I were to use uh, like a square object, like a cube, for example, uh, what you can see here is this dot product that I'm doing uh, kind of breaks apart because my, my surfaces are flat. And so when I'm rotating this around, you can see that there are no dark outlines around the edges of my box here because it's unable to detect um, thresholds that are lower than 0 0.5, uh, 0.15. But then on these flat faces, it shades the entire face uh, because this is uh, lower than 0 0.15. And so for smooth round objects, this method of generating the, the paint effect or the ink effects works really well. But for uh, square or hard edge objects, uh, it doesn't work that great. Here, here again, you can see on my cylinder, uh, in the areas where the surfaces are rounded, I get nice outlines, but in the areas where the surfaces are flat, it's either not shading anything or it's shading the entire face, uh, which is not exactly what I want. So uh, this method is the easiest and probably the cheapest method in terms of rendering. Um, but it also has some downsides or some artifacts. So let's take a look at another method. And this is a method that I've been using for a really long time. In fact, uh, I made 
several games on the original Xbox and the PlayStation 2 uh, that were tune shaded that used this particular technique. And the advantage of this technique is you don't need any fancy shaders at all because you just do it with the mesh itself. Now in order to edit meshes, uh, I'm not gonna be doing that in Unreal. I'm gonna switch over to using Blender. And I'm using Blender because it's free and everybody can download it. Uh, but you can use you can use the same technique in 3ds max or maya or pretty much any modeling package all right so let's switch over to blender and take a look okay so here we are in blender and you can see that i'm using the uh crazy suzanne monkey head here and the monkey head has these nice black outlines and so what i'm going to show you is how to create these outlines using blender so here I have an extra mesh, which is generating the outlines, and I'm just gonna delete that for now. And we're gonna make a new version of this so I can show you step-by-step step what to do. So I'm gonna take my mesh and hit Control-C and Control-V to copy and paste it. So now I have an identical mesh or an identical copy of my monkey head. And so what I'm gonna do to create these outlines is I'm gonna switch to modeling here and then under my face menu i'm going to pick extrude faces along normals and what this is going to do is it's going to push the faces of my monkey head outward or inward along the direction that each of the faces is pointing so if i pick extrude faces along normals and then i just slowly drag up with my mouse you can see that it's like my monkey head is being inflated like a balloon. And I can also make it smaller, although you won't see this very well because it's going inside the other monkey head that's underneath it. So what I'm gonna do is start with the faces exactly where they are at the beginning, and then I'm just gonna push upwards just a little bit so that my copy, so that the copy of my monkey head is just slightly larger than the original one. And then I'm going to click to let go. And now I have two monkey heads, uh, one that's the original and one that's just slightly larger. Now, the next thing that I need to do is flip the faces of my larger head so that they're inverted, so that the back faces are, are showing instead of the front faces. And so I'm going to go under the mesh menu and I'm going to pick normals and flip. And now you can see if I deselect everything and go back to uh, my layout mode, now you can see that I've got this outline uh, that's surrounding my monkey head. One thing that I will say that you need to do uh, to make sure that this is working correctly is come up here under the, um, the viewport shading options and make sure that back face culling is on. If it's not, then your larger monkey head um, is going to just draw on top of your smaller monkey head and you won't see it. Um, in this case, I think these outlines are a little bit too thick. And so I'm gonna delete this version and try again. All right, now I've got a version that I think is working pretty well. The last thing that I can do is add a material to uh, my larger monkey head. So I'm just gonna come down here to materials and hit the plus to add a new one. And then, so that it looks good in the viewport, I'm gonna pick the viewport display section here, and under color, I'm gonna make my larger monkey head uh, just shade a color of black. And so now you can see that uh, my smaller monkey head has front faces, and so it's what's drawing the gray color, and my larger monkey head is only showing back faces and so I only see it around the edges of my smaller monkey head. And with this technique, I can create uh, tune outlines on pretty much any device that can render in 3D because I've done it with the geometry itself, with the mesh, uh, rather than um, depending on trying to do this in the shader. So this technique uh, works great and it's probably the original method that uh, anyone ever used to do tune shading in 3D. So if I wanted to bring this in, into Unreal, I would join my two meshes together into a single mesh uh, with two different materials. And then in Unreal, I would assign my uh, tune paint material 
to the smaller version, to the smaller monkey head, and I would assign just a black material to the outline. So this method works pretty well. It works for both rounded materials uh, and squared off and blocky materials, unlike the pure shader version that I showed you before. However, the one downside to this version is that it's pretty much doubling my polygon count. So if I'm on a really tight polygon budget and I'm, I'm worried about how expensive it is to draw these meshes, I've basically doubled my polygon count here. And so I would need to keep the polygon count on my character fairly low so that I could double it for uh, the tune shaded outline. So we've talked about two ways to create tune outlines so far. In the shader, like this, and also by duplicating and flipping the mesh. The third method is quite a bit more complex. It's done as a post process to the screen. And basically you run a find edges filter on the depth buffer so that it finds places in the depth buffer where the depth makes sudden jumps. And then it shades those dark while everything else is light. While I know this method can be really effective, unfortunately I'm not an expert at creating post-process effects in either Unreal or Unity, so instead of trying to teach you something I don't understand very well myself, what I'll do is put a set of links down in the description to tutorials for how to create ink effects using the post-processing method. Next week, I'm going to show you how to add specular highlights to the Tune Shader, so be sure to come back for that one. Thanks for watching everybody, and I'll see you next week.